Okay, got a tutorial on absolute value and solving absolute value equations. Uh, real quick, if you could pause your video and make sure you get down this definition for absolute value, a number's distance from zero. What's interesting about a number's distance from zero is that it can't be negative. It's always counted in how far you've gone. So let me show you what I mean. In this example right here where these bars mean absolute value, so I'm literally asking the question, how far is 5 from 0? Well, how far is 5 from 0? Well, that would be 5 units. Okay, well, think about it like this. Well, how far is negative 5 from 0? Even though you're going to the left, even though you're dealing with negative numbers, you're still going 5 units away from 0. So there's two numbers that have the same absolute value of 5, 5 and negative 5. So the thing I need you to keep in mind throughout this entire lesson is that absolute value has two answers because there's two numbers depending on if you're going to the left or to the right of 0 on a number line as far as distance from 0. Um, just really quick right here so the absolute value of negative 2 even though it's negative it's 2 units away from 0 so we're thinking in terms of distance not its value um, interesting I tried to maybe trick you here with negative 10 plus 8 well so we want to find the distance from 0 of whatever that is so first we need to figure out what negative 10 plus 8 is well negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2 so now I want to know what's the absolute value of negative 2 so how far is negative 2 from 0 two units. Tried to trick you again with this negative out front, but you're not going to be fooled. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, and then it's just asking you to do the opposite of whatever that is. So we've got our 5, keep your negative, answer is negative 5. And I know what you're thinking, I can't have a negative distance, but this is outside the absolute value bars, and we literally can read it as the opposite of whatever the answer is. Okay? Um, and then we've got the absolute value of zero. Well, how far is zero from itself? Well, we don't have to move, so that means the absolute value of zero is zero. All right, let's solve some equations with absolute value in them. Again, we're keeping in our head the idea that we're going to have two answers. There's two numbers with the same absolute value. So right here in number one, X is not just going to have one answer, X equals a number. It's actually going to have two different answers, and we're going to have to account for those two scenarios. But before we can start worrying about the two scenarios, we have to get the absolute value by itself. So right away, I want to subtract 5 from both sides because that's the inverse operation of add 5. So these two cancel out, and I've got the absolute value of X by itself, and that's going to be equal to 6. So now I need to find out what numbers are 6 units away from 0. Well, that's going to either be 6 or it could be negative 6. All right, well, let's take it to a little bit higher level here. If you look over at number 2, a little bit more complicated, a few more things to get rid of, but the idea is still the same. I want to isolate the absolute value. Reverse order of operations is what we use to decide what to get rid of first, so subtraction and addition are at the bottom, so they're getting rid of first. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. 3 times the absolute value of 4w minus 1 is equal to 5. Sorry, 15. Almost made that mistake. That's okay. All right, so now I need to get rid of that 3 out front. Well, that means multiplication. So how do I undo multiplication, or what's the inverse of multiplication? Divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And here we go. I'm going to have the absolute value of 4w minus 1 is equal to 15 divided by 3. That's 5. So now I'm ready to split into my two scenarios. So I'm going to kind of make our screen a little bit bigger and focus into one area and rewrite where I'm at right now, which is 4w minus 1 is equal to 5. So now I'm going to split into two cases. Either 4w minus 1 is equal to 5, or because of absolute value having two scenarios, 4w minus 1 is equal to negative 5. So Notice that it was what we were equal to is what gave me the positive and the negative scenario. What was inside the absolute value stayed the exact same. Okay, now I just have two equations to solve. That's going to give me two answers. So add 1 to both sides. 4w is equal to 6. Divide both sides by 4. And I know you're thinking, oh, he's going to have a decimal. He must have did something wrong. Nope, decimals are just fine. 4 is equal to 1.5. So that's one of my scenarios, but I've still got this other one to discover. 
Add 1 to both sides here. 4w is equal to negative 4. Divide both sides by 4, and w is equal to negative 1. So there are two numbers that when I substitute them in for w, I would have been able to have this equation be a true statement. So again, absolute value, we're going to have two solutions for it. Okay, four, um, and notice this time the complication is that we have variables on both sides of the equation. So what we've got to be careful of is we've got to make sure that we deal with that negative, and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. All right, right away, we've got the absolute value isolated. That's great. We don't have to do additional work with that, so we can go ahead and split into our two scenarios. So we've got 2x plus 5 is equal to 3x plus 4, or 2x plus 5 is equal to, and we're going to put the opposite, or negative, 3x plus 4. So we'll deal with that negative when we go to deal with this second equation, but I'm just going to solve this equation over here to the left first. So I want to get all my variables together, and I want to get all my constants together. I like to keep my variables positive, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I got 5 is equal to x plus 4. Last step to isolate my x, subtract 4 from both sides. 1 is equal to x, and I can use the symmetric property and flip it around if I'd like. x is equal to 1. So that's one of my solutions. Now I need the second one because absolute value has two answers. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that negative sign because I don't want to forget about it. Everything in that parentheses is negative now or the opposite of whatever it is. So 2x plus 5 is equal to negative 3x minus 4. So now, again, I want to keep my x values positive. So actually, there's more x's on the left side this time. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. These cancel on my right because they add up to 0. 2x plus 3x is 5x plus 5 is equal to negative 4. And now I want to go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides. Now 5x is equal to negative 9. And already I know you're a little bit nervous, maybe a little bit squeamish. Two reasons. One, you're going to have a decimal here. Negative 9 divided by 5 is a decimal answer. But the other is that you're going to have a negative answer. But remember, we're not in absolute value bars at this point. So we don't have to be afraid of a negative at this stage of the game. All right, I'm going to go ahead and divide by 5. Because I know that what I've done is correct, and I know that it's okay to have decimals. There's lots of decimals out there. All right, x is going to be equal to, because those cancel, you can leave it as 9 fifths, or you could type in the decimal equivalent into your calculator. I'm comfortable with both, and I'll take those answers on your work that you turn in. So 1 and negative 9 fifths are our two solutions for number 4. I'm going to do example 6 with you. If you'll take a look here, we do have variables on both sides of the equation, but we also have a coefficient out front. So I need to get rid of that before I can start thinking about dealing with my absolute value. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Now I've got to be careful, even though that gives me what I want where they cancel out and I've got the absolute value isolated, I still need to deal with that divided by 2 on the right side. So that means everybody gets divided by 2. So 12 divided by 2 is 6x. And negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. So now I've dealt with the 2. That's great because I don't have any fractions at this point. And I could go ahead and separate into my two scenarios similar to number 4. So 4x minus 5 is equal to 6x minus 9. Or 4x minus 5 is equal to the opposite of 6x minus 9. And I'm going to need to deal with that negative here in a second. All right, so I would continue to solve here, subtract 4x from both sides. And I've got negative 5 is equal to 2x minus 9. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. And that's great news because that gives me a 4 is equal to 2x. And I'll divide everything by 2. And x is equal to 2 using that symmetric property and flipping it around and making it look like I like. One of my answers right there and looking for the second one now. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative. 4x minus 5 is equal to negative 6. Now, a negative times a negative is a positive. Make sure we don't forget about that. And I could go ahead and continue to deal with this scenario. I'm going to add 6x to both sides. And I've got 10x's minus 5 is equal to 9. Add 5 to both sides. And I get 10x 
is equal to 14. And I know what you're thinking again. This is going to lend me, give me a decimal. It's okay. Divide both sides by 10. And I've got x is equal to either you can reduce 14 over 10 or you can just give me the 1.4 answer equivalent. And those are my two answers. Notice again, the previous example, I gave you a decimal, uh, sorry, a fraction answer. Now I gave you a decimal answer. I'm comfortable with, with both. It's whatever you're most comfortable with giving. All right, my last thing I want to talk to you about are extraneous roots. Or extraneous solutions. Here's our definition, so you can pause the screen and make sure you get this definition down. Solutions that yield false statements. Those are extraneous solutions. And I'll just show you what I mean with this idea of false statements. So if we just take a look at number two really quickly, and we just solve it like we've been solving it all day, the absolute value is isolated. So that means my two scenarios are 6x minus 3 is equal to negative 9 or 6x minus 3 is equal to 9. Those are the two different scenarios that that could be. So I'll just solve these two equations. Add 3, add 3, and 6x is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by 6, and x is equal to negative 1. Or add 3 to both sides over here. 6x is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 6, and x is equal to, sorry, not 6, 2. So these are my two solutions, negative 1 and 2. So if I go to check these solutions with my original problem, so substituting in for x, so 6 times negative 1 minus 3, is that indeed equal to negative 9? So inside these parentheses, that's negative 6 minus 3 equals negative 9. So negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. And I ask myself, is the absolute value of negative 9 equal to negative 9? And the answer is no. Because remember, absolute value is a number's distance from 0. So how far is negative 9 from 0? It's not negative 9. It's 9. So the absolute value of negative 9 is 9, not negative 9. So that's a false statement. So when we say extraneous solutions are solutions that yield false statements right there is an example they're telling me that the absolute value of negative 9 is supposed to be equal to negative 9 that's not true it's supposed to be equal to positive 9 because distance is non-negative if I plug in the 2 I get probably something that does work absolute value of 6 times 2 minus 3 equals negative 9 and I get 12 minus 3 equals negative 9. So that means the absolute value of 9 equals negative 9. Well, that's not true either. You know, thinking that possibly it might be true, well, it wasn't. So the absolute value of 9 is 9, so not negative 9. So neither one of these are correct. Those are extraneous solutions because they are solutions that yielded false statements.